from PRX. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, whether you uh, have a pet or you've, whether you know whether you've had a pet rock or not, or you say I don't even, or you found a painted rock, you paint rocks, uh, you see rocks, you listen to rocks. Or you just like the sound of rock, you know, rock, like, uh, like, fi- I don't know who doesn't like finding, I mean, I guess there's times you wouldn't want to find a painted rock, uh, because people hide painted rocks a bit like a geocache. Uh, but what is it? You say, did I tune into the ro- ro- rolling rock cast? And I said, no, but if, is there a podcast about rolling rocks? Uh, cause I'd, I'd like to know more. Is that a kind is that like a, a cause that sounds somewhat soothing, Except, well, skipping rocks. If you if you've ever wished there was a po- like a podcast where a person just skipped rocks and talked, uh, this one, this may be your show because like like there's skip there's somebody up in upstairs in my brain skipping rocks, and then someone just said you're a few short short rocks short of a skip you know of skipping rocks, and I say correct um, correct uh, or as the Fonz would say correct amundo. Or is a rock, is skip a rock a mundo, skip a rock a sk- skippo. If you're confused, though, you might be in the right place. This is time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that's here to put you to sleep, keep you company, take your mind off of stuff. Uh, whether you whether you listen or not, whether you're awake or asleep, no pressure to fall asleep. We'll be here over an hour. Uh, this is a different, very different podcast. It does take some getting used to, but it's free and it's uh, kind-hearted. What we'll have is some support for the show. That's how it comes out free. Then a long, meandering intro where I over-explain what I'm already over-explaining now. And you'd say, now I know someone other than Charlie Brown, who on uh, the times where you go uh, for uh, trick or trick or trick treating, someone else I may may give a rock. And I'd say, great, though. If it's a rock, I could skip a roll or paint, which it could be. Anyway, it's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that's here to keep you company and put you to sleep. Thanks for coming by. And here's a couple of ways we're able to do it for free twice a week. Hey, everybody, this is Scoots. And if you listen all night long, you really want to think about becoming a patron. The feedback I got from patrons is that, uh, you know, one of the things they love about being a patron is they get to support the show that puts them to sleep. But a lot of patrons are surprised uh, how much they love the ad-free episodes, especially people that listen all night long. And that starts at just 5 bucks a month. But 10 and $20 patrons, there's like thousands of things, old episodes all the way back to episode two, all night episodes, story only episodes, all intro episodes. So if you listen all night long or you listen on a regular basis, you really get a lot out of the podcast. Become a patron and you do not want to miss out. Now's the time to become a patron. We're doing something this summer called Subscriber Summer and it's a great time to get in the door. Uh, Go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. Right now I'm working on catalog episodes for patrons, Great British Bake Off episodes for patrons, and so much more. Sleep With Me Podcast podcast.com slash patron. Thanks, everybody. All right, uh, everybody. It is time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone. And this might be the most excited Sleepy Supporter Zone uh, I've been because I got one response. I asked a few times for, for listeners to response. And Abby Ann was the one person that reached out, not only took the quiz at Helix, but Abby Ann got a Helix Midnight Lux. Uh, Abby Ann's a side sleeper. That's helixsleep.com slash sleep. But on our sponsors page, you can check out all our sponsors. This episode is made possible by Abby Ann's action to support its sponsor. Even if you take a free trial, take a quiz, check out the Progressive Tool, check out the ZocDoc app, that helps the show be free for everybody. So if you have a chance, thank Abby Ann. Abby Ann, this episode is your episode. And I'm probably going to mention this again and again and again because you stepped up and helped. Thank you so much, Abby Ann. I'm not, I don't know how, like, thank you. Uh, and if you want to support a sponsor, test out a sponsor, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors. Check them out. Fill out the form there. Share it on social media. That's even a bigger help. Thank you so much, Abby Ann. We couldn't do it without listeners like you. That's the first part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone. The second part of the Sleepy Supporter Zone is you getting the support you need right now. If you're having a tough time. 
There's resources you can connect with right now in our show notes, including international resources about being a part of positive change and community, not just saying Black Lives Matter, not just saying stop AAPI hate, not just saying support Ukraine, but learning more and then taking action. There's links to resources where you could do that in our show notes. And one of the actions we're taking is building hygiene kits for people experiencing homelessness. You could do it and you could distribute it right in your own community, or you could be a part of uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash midnight mission is the newsletter I new- use uh, for the building the hygiene kits together or buying them or reaching out to your local homeless shelter or support services and seeing what what do they need uh, or asking people you encounter uh, on, a, on a regular basis. So uh, yeah, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash midnight mission. Oh, Mystery Bart, a lot of people help out on this show. Who are they? Post-y post your song. Sounds like an earful. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes too. Carl W. The Legend. Also edits episodes. Ashley. Scotty, Jennifer, runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team let us down are on the website. I am the mystery bar. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at JonathanMan.net. I'll write a song for you. Any reason at all. You can tell me the story and I'll make it personal. You see the kindness shine straight on through when the listeners form their own Facebook group. Keith, Stacy, Sarah. Jennifer, these are your moderators. Get support, dear scooter on Patreon. Buy the merch and support the sponsors. You can find anything you want at sleepwithmepodcast.com. And we're so proud that we could dance. Rusty Biscuit, Lois, and I like banana. Leah does the transcript. Thanks, Mystery Bard. I'm at Dear Scooter on Twitter and Instagram. That's where you can find me. And what do you say we slow it down and get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble, getting to sleep, trouble, staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it the bedtime story. All you need to do, or all you could do, or you could, you may metaphorically do this. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest, and what I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you can set aside whatever is keeping you awake, whether it's thoughts about the past, the present, the future, like uh, that are coming up or have been there all day long. It could be feelings, and maybe the feelings are related to the thoughts, or maybe the feelings, you know, the f- physical sensations. It could be changes in time, temperature, routine. You could be anticipating something, or just go- going through something, or just getting over something. Or it might be something else. Whatever it is, I'm here to keep you company and take your mind off stuff so you could fall asleep. And that's the main reason I make the show, so you could fall asleep, because you deserve a good night's sleep. You deserve a place you can rest, a bedtime you don't have to dread, a bedtime you could feel neutral about, or maybe even look forward to. Maybe this podcast could be a part of something. Say, well, it's not too bad. I got that bore guy. He talks about nothing, but it's kind of something. It's kind of something when he talks about nothing. He's kind of, but he's 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 not even good about talking about nothing because he's talking about something. But it all adds up to nothing. There's a song like that uh, somewhere in there, but uh, but you don't. You say, "Scoots, I prefer not to dance with you. I'd prefer to watch you dance around song lyrics and nothing, and your ability to not, you know, be something." So uh, you, but oh, but, by the way, is something important? The only thing important is you getting the sleep you need and, and the rest you need for your life to be more manageable. And ideally, you start getting the rest you need on a regular basis. Your your relationship with bedtime changes most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time. And you could be out there flourishing in the world. And that means our world will be a better place. The other reason I make the show, and a lot of listeners, regular listeners, are probably starting to nod their heads, ideally because they're nodding off. But if they're not, uh, is because a lot of us have been there in the deep, dark night. I kind of talked about some stuff that might be keeping you up, but it could be something else. And it might not be something I've gone through personally, but I might be able to relate to the... I'm pretty confident there's at least one of the feelings there that I could relate to, that, I, you know, I've, I've had similar feelings. 
But if I can't, there's someone listening, I guarantee it, who can. And who says, yeah, that's tough. Uh, and not being able to sleep on top of it. Uh, so that's why why we make the show kind of, because the show wouldn't exist without the listeners who support it anyway. Because we're here because we know what it feels like and we want to help. So what I'll do is I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night, and I'm going to go on lull, well, lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones. That's how my voice sounds. And I'll go on superfluous, what are it called? Uh, pointless meanders and superfluous tangents, which you've kind of already seen a few of those. It means I'll get mixed up. I'll go off topic. I'll repeat myself. Then I'll say, was I talking about skipping rocks or painting rocks before? Do rocks, here's a question, never came up on the podcast that I know about. And I guess it's, you'd say, definitely no, but do rocks need primer? I mean, I'll rephrase the question. That was just an efficient way to say it. Uh, is painting rocks best when the rocks are primed? Uh, and has anyone ever asked a, a rock, are you primed to be painted? I mean, I know rocks can't respond that we that I know of, uh, I mean, unless they're in a movie or something. But if you're painting rocks and you're priming them, by the way, go for it. Uh, I mean, I maybe I, I've always wondered how they get that rock so shiny. What kind of paint is this on here? And the rock, these are the rocks in my mind, of course, uh, the imaginary rocks in my mind. But uh, if you do, if you're involved involved in any of these activities, say hey. Are you primed to be painted or what? I mean, I'd love it if a rock said I'm primed to be painted. Uh, I feel a need, a need to be painted indeed. But first, please prime me, if you please, uh, for I'll be more shiny when someone goes and finds me when they're on, you know, they have to bend down, maybe even dig around and go on their knees. Uh, a, a primed rock is primed to be painted indeed. And Scoots is not a rhymer. It's clear to see. Uh, those are pointless meanders and superfluous tangents. Now, uh, what do you need to know about the show? One, if you're having an, an objection or strong feelings or doubts about this podcast, you're in good company because that's the way most people react to this show. And why wouldn't you? If you're like me or the hundreds of thousands of people listening right now, you probably tried a bunch of different stuff, right? You said, oh, boy. That worked once. Or, yeah, warm milk. I mean, how much warm milk can one person drink? Am, am I right? I mean, and some people might say zero, and I say, yeah, so that's out. Or a hot bath. You say, okay, you know, you can't do, you can't, like, uh, how, you know, how much how much calm breathing can one person handle? I'm laughing because it's a, a lot. My brain, my, uh, what is that called? Uh, I like uh, brain stem said more. I could I could handle more, and I'd say yeah. Well, of course you could. Of course you could handle more calm breathing. <laughs> Love it so much. Uh, so if you're here and you're doubtful, that's a skeptical. That's a normal way to go, get to the show. Now you may already loathe me in the podcast, and I would say maybe stick around because most regular listeners who pay to listen to the free podcast are supported said it took two or three tries for me to get used to the show. But there are people that uh, <laughs> are incredibly strong feeling about the podcast right away. And they let me know about it. You don't need to let me know about it because there's a website for you. Sleep with me podcast.com slash no thank you. And there's tons of other slippy stuff on there. I'd rather you find that stuff and you still get the rest you need. It doesn't change the fact if you like me or not that you deserve a good night's sleep or, you you know, the podcast doesn't work for you. Like, uh, there's still good stuff. You still deserve good stuff. And uh, if you're a rock, you, always, you know, maybe you don't always need to be primed. But maybe that was my problem with all the imaginary rock painting I've never done. But I say, my paint always looks, uh, they say, well, first of all, you used watercolors. Uh, and I said, well, that's what I had on hand. Uh, I said, w would it have made a difference? Well, if you primed it, here's here's interesting. Let's just like get it, lean into this a little bit more. There's a part of my brain right now, while I'm trying to help you, that's criticizing my imaginary rock painting. I don't know if you have a part of your brain like that, but I don't know if you just heard that. It was subtle. But, you know, we were going on a tangent about painting rocks, and it said, you're doing it wrong. 
And I said, making a horribly tangential metaphor about painting rocks and how it somehow relates to a sleep podcast eight minutes into an intro, and you're going to point out that I'm painting ima imaginarily, metaphorically, imaginarily painting rocks, but that I've procrastinated on imaginarily painting. No wonder. Why wouldn't I not, you say? So this is where we hug that part of us and say, I love it. I love how you're pointing that out. You're right. I should prime. I wish I didn't. Well, maybe I could use watercolors on some and prime some and paint some. Or maybe I should start with just putting people to sleep. So, okay, so if the show isn't for you, give it a few tries to see how it goes. Uh, what else do you need to know? This is a podcast you don't really listen to. You may have already figured that out already, but if you haven't, uh, you can kind of barely listen. Now, if you can't sleep or you need a break during the day, I'm here to the very end because there are a percentage of listeners who can't sleep at all. But you don't need to listen to me. You could, I mean, it's a podcast, so you could always listen to it again. I'm not going to say anything super important. And even if I say something like 20 episodes from now, I'll be like, huh, I've never talked about Prime and Rocks before. This or, And then I'll say, this early in the podcast. And uh, I'll say, you know, but like a Primer. Uh, so it's... Uh, it's not, uh, this is not ground, I mean, it is groundbreaking because I've never heard anybody talk, talk about priming rocks, but it's groundbreaking in a way you'd say, well, that's nice. Uh, Scoots has broken new ground in imaginarily painting rocks and working with his internal rock painting critic. But yeah, I think I'll fall asleep. So it's a podcast you don't really need to listen to. Also, no pressure to fall asleep. I actually don't push you to sleep. I keep you company and take your mind off of stuff while you fall asleep. Just like a friend in the deep, dark night. That's like what I roll. I apply to Phil. Boar friend, boar bay, boar sib, boar bud, boar bestie, nay boar, boar burr, boar bra, boar best. Did I say bo Yeah, boar friend. I'm here to be your friend in the deep, dark night. Keep you company while you drift off. Structurally, that's the other thing that throws people off sometimes. The show starts off with a greeting, friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and I talk about something. So you say, maybe you feel seen, maybe you feel welcome, maybe you say this is a little bit silly, I'll check it out. I uh, maybe feel like I could lower my guard a little bit. I'm not actually asking you to put your guard down because I'm a human, man. Holy cow. Uh, you know, humanity, I've got it. I've had a few, I've, had, I've got more than my share. Uh, so just kind of see how it goes. Uh, but that's what the intro does. Then there's support for the show. So, because we make about, I don't know, 90, 80, 100 episodes a year. It takes a lot of work. Uh, and that support, the sponsors and the listeners who support the show make that possible. Then there's uh, support for like listeners who are having hard, hard, hard time. There's support for communities around the show. Then there's the intro, which we're just towards the end of. The intro is where I introduce the podcast. It takes me between 10 and 15 minutes. Sometimes it takes me 16. Sometimes it takes me 19 or 20, 18, 17, 11. I don't know if I've gotten it under nine in a long time. But you say, why do you ineffectively introduce the podcast every time? I say, well, just natural skill. I mean, how could you not think about, I mean, that's just me and why I'm made to put people to sleep. I say, how could I not keep talking about priming rocks and talking to rocks about being prime? I mean, because so, you say, man, you're so prime. I'm going to prime you. And uh, I'm going to prime a prime number of rocks on a prime, you know, on prime day. And then... Uh, like I'm a order paint that it paint I ordered the previous Prime Day, and uh, I, hopefully that's a, they, that day. I'm assuming those days are Prime Day anyway. I don't like yeah, and they say you don't know you wouldn't know a Prime number from a Prime Rock. I'd say you're you're right, uh, uh, but uh, what's my points? Boar friend, boar. Oh, why does the intro go on and on and on? But for the regular listener. The new listener, you get a taste of what the podcast is going to be like. But for the regular listener, the podcast uh, for, for most listeners is the way they ease into bedtime, either as part of their wind-down routine, getting ready for bed and prepped for bed, or in bed getting comfortable. There are listeners that fall asleep. There are listeners that skip the intro. 
There are listeners that only listen to the episode intro. There's a small percentage of listeners that listen all night long. And there's people that listen to the show in bits. So there's no wrong way to listen to the show. But for most listeners and from the research about sleep, it's like easing you into bedtime, having a like a wind down period, a twilight period is what works most of the time. And so that's what the intro does. Now, if you're asleep, that's great. Or you fall asleep during the intro, that's great. If you can't sleep, I'm here to keep you company. So that's the intro. Then there's support between the intro and the story again. So the show could be free and come out regularly. And then there'll be a story. Tonight will be our episodically modular series, Make Great Pets, about not about great pets in history, but about uh, great, you know, pets like, uh, it's actually not about pets doing great things, but um, that's just the, uh, originally it was a working title because I couldn't think it. I said, does, it, does this describe what it is in a really effective way? And he said, well, it's to put people to sleep anyway, and it sounds nice. And it kind of sums up what's happening. So, yeah, Make Great Pets. And it was influenced by the song where there's a chorus, We'll Make Great Pets. It has nothing to do with what the song's like, unless the song was fictionally reinvented in my imagination. Uh, because, uh, But it's about nice things happening because of pets, because pets are so nice. That part is 100% accurate. May, yeah. And not ironic, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So that's that'll be a bedtime story. Then there's some thank yous at the end. So this is a podcast here to keep you company if you can't sleep and to keep you company if you're asleep and you're not listening. And it does take some getting used to. But I hope it helps you really because I've been there. And I really appreciate you coming by. I work really hard on this show. So do a bunch of other people. And I really yearn and I strive and I really hope I can help you fall asleep. So thanks again one more time for coming by. And here's a couple of ways I'm able to do it for you for free twice a week. Sleep With Me is brought to you by Progressive, home of the Name Your Price tool. You say how much you want to pay for car insurance, and they'll show you the coverage options to fit your budget. It's easy to start a quote. Visit Progressive.com to get started. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. All right, Scoots here. It's time for our episodically modular series, uh... Make Great Pets, I guess, is the initial name of it. And it's a, it's a story about, a, it's an episodically modular series about, how you know, you, you, we all knew, you know, pets are great. Pets make us great or better. You say, well, great. Uh, it's great to have pets uh, and not always easy. You know, it's got its, uh, I'm just making sure if my pets are listening I'm trying, or all pets are listening. You know, all those pets that are listening, you're the best pets. But the question is, uh, comes up uh, rarely, except in sleep podcasts. Uh, well, wh- why why do pets make us so great? Uh, what's going on there? And this series does not exactly answer that, but it could answer it. Uh, it's episodically modular, so you can listen to these in any order. Lead character Ren's going to catch you up. Uh, and it's just a tale about great pet, you know. Uh, how do pets uh, help us, uh, you know, do, you know, it's, it's great. It's so snoozy, really. And uh, go in any order. Main character's Ren, and Ren keeps an audio journal, so convenient for this podcast, uh, about helping people as a pet. The uh, rest will be explained. But, you know, there's one thing beyond explanation, uh, beyond my understanding, the charm, the charisma, when someone's just being them, themselves and you say, where did you get that charm and charisma? I don't know what you mean. I'm just being me. Ha ha ha. You say, how do you stay so charming when it, you drive up from Los Angeles, uh, you happen to hit 10 hours of traffic uh, to total, which should have been a six or five hour drive? You say, yeah, you t- I say, well, can you wait in your car for another, tw-? you know, you say, please, Scooter, come in, let me, and I say, no, I was just kidding. I was just testing your charm and patience and uh, charisma. And then you come in and you make my day, really, uh, with your, like, that's the thing. Uh, 
beyond it's not the circumstances it's the 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 glow within him and that's why he's perfect for setting up a podcast to put people sleep right in the middle you really are the cream i mean i mean you're not the cream of the crop you're the cream in the middle of the cookie uh in this case uh Really, I didn't even thought. Have I never? I've never called you the sandwich, the cream of the sand, cre, sand, cream of the sandwich, cream, cream, cream. You know, but without like, if there was one where you go to a bakery, where they say we have bespoke sandwich cookies uh, or whatever, ba- you know, we make them fresh. Um, Mister Antonio Banderas, uh, the ladies, the gentlemen, the boys, the girls, the friends, to be on the binary time. To uh, pet your pets, uh, to appreciate them. It's time, if you so choose, to cuddle with them or to think of them in a cuddling manner. It's time for Make Great Pets. Meow. Oh, by the way, speaking of meows, uh, you know, Antonio's got a movie in the theater when I'm recording this. Probably will be, I think it's it, like a. Uh, um, I got to check the release date, but it'll be after this it came out. So check it on streaming. Um, not sure if you have a specific, he, he does, he's shrugging. Uh, you know, he doesn't come here for, uh, what are these called? Um, promos or whatever, not a promo, but wouldn't you do that? And, uh, he's not here for that, but he is, uh, um, I hope you did voice, like you say, what if they didn't replace you? Right. Uh, anyway. That's Mr. Antonio Banderas. Uh, either he's saying move along because he he was some you know, or he just doesn't want me to promote something for free for him. But you could look on I am you know if you need it if you want to sigh just look up Antonio Banderas on IMDb and you'll 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 sigh in a good way. Oh boy, will you? That's a guarantee. And here's another guarantee. We're about to start our uh, uh, episodic modular series. Uh, Make great pets. Hey everybody, this is uh, this is Ren here. Um, if you're just listening to this recording first, uh, this is a training log of. Uh, I, I I won't be able to explain it if for some reason you're digging into archives. Uh, you'll have to do a little bit more work because this is for people already in some sort of training process. So you have a little bit of info, but I'm going to give you more. So you'll be able, actually, if you're just listening to this and you have no information, you just discovered it, Ren, audio log, nice to meet you, or Ren, working, I guess I'm maybe your predecessor, but we could be working in parallel, I'm part of a new program, or, you know, what I've been told is a new program. Uh, I don't have any reason to, to believe that other than my natural skepticism that I have sometimes. It's a... What uh, I've heard called recently a uh, big farm post, like a big farm program. So as after your post earthly existence, uh, you may move on to so, some sort of new experience. This is one of these new experiences you can move on to. The what and why of that is not part of the training. I mean, it may, it may come up as you're trying to rest. Uh, and, and so this program was meant to replace uh, various programs on various versions I'm also assuming uh, you're you were before your big farm. You may know what that is. Uh, you were a human being at one point, or a spiritual being trying to be human, whatever they say. And uh, so you may be familiar with some of these things I'm referencing. If not, you might have a little more work to do. So once upon a time, there was a version. There, was, oh, here's the other thing. Uh, this may. I mean, I guess if you've already moved on to a new stage of existence, it shouldn't totally blow your mind. I mean, especially when you're like, wow, some of the parts of that movie Beetlejuice are pretty accurate. Uh, but so, what was I saying? So, you know, there's been various versions of Earth all, and, you know, the parallel and the alternative, that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm not a person, I, I just know from what I've been told, once upon a time there was one version of Earth, uh, that had guardian winged, uh, robed beings, uh, and they were supposed to help, uh, and 
there was like, oh, you could go after your post-Earth thing, you would go, oh, you could come up here. It's very, you know, very, uh, it's got clouds, it's got rainbows, uh, buffets, all that kind of stuff. Music, you could, you could play the harp, uh, you could listen to the harp, uh, and mo so much more. Or you could go down here and uh, remember the parts of your job you didn't like? You'll be doing a lot of that down here. And so these are myths, by the way. You, you know, I'm not a historian. But they said, hey, let's send some of these winged, robed people down there to help people. So they make, you know, so so... We don't want anybody having to do spreadsheets or filing or stapling or pushing. You know, there's people that had to roll a rock up and down a hill, I've heard. And so they had this guardian, they called it the guardian angel system. Uh, and that was, that was going okay. It wasn't perfect. Uh, and that was disrupted. And at some point there was this uh, uh, Bessos Penny... What was it about? Sears Bessos Penny uh, in, in like a uh, in, incident? They they do they do some people do refer to it that way. Usually it's not so clinical. They're saying things and muttering. And that kind of disrupted that one, and a second one where they said, "Hey, what if we send someone from that's been down filing who says, well, I know what I did to get up end up you know when I have a frowny face." Uh, let me go up there and tell them to make a better choice. Uh, trust me, I won't try to enjoy my, you know, trust me, even though you've been making me file, for, you know, roll this rock for 4,000 years, uh, I promise I'll totally help these people out. Uh, like I won't go, you know, try to drink some cool water or, you know, have, you know, have fresh fruit or, you know, you, 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 I'll tell you, that didn't work. Uh, it turns out, you you could you could read but you, so that disrupted those two and then trying to fix that uh, permanently put a wedge in the uh, idea of the guardian angel system and I guess like again I don't know the layers above me but whatever whomever is uh, going they said uh, the you know there's not a here here's one thing. I do. I'm, I'm pretty sure I know because otherwise, why would they have me do my job? Not an unlimited number of Earths, as you know it. Uh, also, you might say, "How come Earth's so important?" I'd say, "No, I think there's a, it's probably not unlimited resources. Earth's not the only thing. It's just what I'm familiar with. So, do, you know, don't make an inference from my perspective. You know, there's probably you know, uh, Zetan." QB, QB Zobor and their people, I don't know. They probably have their own system. Or I, I, I would think they would say, well, if this is working on Zipan, Zipor 4 or whatever, why don't we try it on Earth? Maybe that's where this program came from. So the program I'm a part of, which is new when I'm starting this, uh, they said, okay, Guardian, Guardian Grouches didn't work, Guardian... Uh, uh, you know, winged, you know, ethereal beings didn't work. Let's try something else, or we need to try something else. And maybe they did some blue sky brainstorming, and they came up with a pretty. Because I think here's here's something you might not know, and this is just a theory. You, it turns out even when you tra change existences. We take some of our fallibility with us. So I'm not perfect, uh, which is pretty good, good to know. And I guess, uh, so ha that was one of the things they learned. They said, oh, you can't have, maybe you can't have all these, uh, uh, you can't make someone into a demigod that's fallible and expect them not to say, whoops, uh, did I just uh, smoke gumdrops off the, you know, for they're, they're gone out of existence. That was a mistake. And they say, are you sure it was a mistake? You always had something against gumdrops. No, no, it's totally a mistake. Uh, I was trying to move a gumball. So if you're failable, you might, you might, and you might say, and if they, even if they interviewed you, you say, well, I don't know for why I thought I was, honestly, I don't know. So maybe having limited powers or barely any powers, uh, is the way they're going now. And that's a long way of saying 
uh, I'm, I'm inside a pet. I don't know if I've done this much explaining before or this way. Every time it's new to me. So there's no, at least at this stage in the training, because I'm recording at night inside the subconscious of a pet, if there is one. Once a pet goes to sleep at night, I awake here and I'm able to, I'm not able to go anywhere because I'm kind of in a boring dream state. Uh, you know, in this particular case, a lot of carrot, carrot munching's going on and petting, of course. You see, you want to make a pet's dream come true. In this particular case, pet, pet me and give me some carrots. Uh, and oh, speak to me in a kind of, you know, that cutie voice. I like it. But so. So I'll record my day as I've seen it, um, and I don't know. I just feel like just in case I wanted to explain all that, which doesn't make any sense. So I'm inside a pet, uh, sp- I don't know, spiritually or consciously. I can influence the pet. Uh, can't make the pet talk or send my thoughts, really. I've been working on that. And I feel like I kind of have to discover more things about the pet. Now, this particular pet that I'm in now is a bunny rabbit, or I guess a bunny. I'm not young, but I'm not too old. And I get called a few different things. I got really lucky today. Maybe that's why I went on and on and on, because I feel like my first day was handed to me on a silver platter with carrots and pets and, and cooing voices. Because normally it won't go like this. Uh, you'll have to do a lot of listening, which for a bunny, pretty easy. I mean, I got big ears and really comfortable. I don't know if Peter Cottontail ever said this, but even when you're not bouncing, a cottontail is not nice to sit on, apparently. Well, apparently to me. Can't get enough of it. So it was, if you're a bunny, it's nice sitting around. Uh, okay, so... Some days you'll have to listen for a few days to figure out what's going on, who, who, what, where, when, why, how. That should be trying the, like, uh, those are the things you want to establish. Because you're here to help someone at what someone's decided, however the mechanisms, uh, the, that I'm not a part of at all. This is a turning point in the person's life. Uh, now, it's usually a subtle turning point. And uh, you kind of have to determine, hey, there, it may not even be obvious what's the turning point or, uh, you know, who, who who you're there to serve, how you can help them, what do they need help with, who, what, where, when, how, why, you know, when, whatever. So, yeah, I think that's, uh, so I'm a rabbit. Oh, my name is uh, Rin, my real name. But uh, Beast 3 or uh, Benicula the third, or Benicula three. Those are the three names. B three normally, but I wouldn't have known this unless I got lucky today, because uh, and I'm not positive who my care like my caretaker currently uh, also has three names. Uh, so I, that makes me more think they are. But it seems like there's some shared parent, you know, bunny parenting with someone else. But I got very lucky because both of these two people, uh, along with briefly, but the, the, like were interviewed by their college paper. So I know we're at a, a university or a college. There's a newspaper still printed, apparently. Uh, and they were interviewing uh, Geo or Joff, G, 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 Jeff with a G, but they, they it's not Jeff, that's even the person they said, so your name's not Jeff with a G. And they said, no, it's Geoff, uh, or, you know, so people call me Geo or Geoff uh, or Geoff, uh, Joff, uh, but Geo's fine. And then they said, who's this? And that's how I knew my name. And uh, then there was Dell was there. Now, Dell and Geo are in a band together. This is what the interview was about. And we'll get to more of those details as I learn them. Uh, so those are the who's. Uh, who, what thus far that I've learned from the interview is that uh, this is a pretty big university. 
you and I think there's colleges within the university. That's why there's a college paper. Maybe I don't know if I was listening is good, you know, because I was trying to get all the details about. I don't think there's any way I'm supposed to help the person interviewing because I didn't even get their name because they didn't pet me or anything. Oh, I'm free. I'm mostly a free ranging rabbit. The door to my cage is open and I don't like, uh, which is cool. Uh, I guess I'm potty trained or cage trained. So, so just, I mean, those details aren't super important, but, uh, it's automatic. I just go back to my cage, uh, or outside, uh, I just go in the grass, uh, so, okay. No, I don't confuse rugs with grass. That's what part of my brain just asked. Okay, so who, what is this Battle of the Bands? Uh, so this is a really big school, and there's a lot of uh, arts and music in the, at this school. And they have this giant Battle of the Bands, which they haven't had in a few years. Uh, so this is the first year. And Gio and Dell are both the seniors that are graduating. It is spring. And this is kind of like towards the end of the year celebration. And it's a big battle of the bands and it's complicated. Also complicated by the school also has math and engineering, a lot of math and engineering. So this is a big community event. Uh, there's uh, some sort of weighted uh, voting and uh, there's uh, there's also like so there's public or attendance voting people attending voting and there's like a panel of judges voting on each band battle which starts uh, tomorrow and it's kind of like uh, where it, it, this part I'm not even sure I totally understand uh, maybe I'll understand more so. But, but Gio and Dell are very confident, and I'll tell you that much. They're seniors. You don't have to be a senior to participate. And they participated as freshmen, but not the past two years. Uh, so, and, oh, they're in a, some sort of uh, romantic relationship, uh, Gio and Dell. So, okay, so where was I? Oh, the Battle of the Bands. So somehow... Like a band will play against a band. There's different rules as as each. Uh, it's a tournament, but it's it. Here's like there's a couple important things to know. If your band loses, uh, especially this is I guess the way they've always done it. Your band has to break up permanently. Like at least in the eyes of all the students in the university, but even off campus places where these bands might perform. It's like a tradition at the school, so you would be scoffed at if you stayed together. And it's considered fun. You know, these are young, uh, resilient students. But so anytime you win a match, your band breaks up, or lose a match, your band breaks up. But then they reassemble those bands. So each time a band loses, the math part of the school and the engineering part of the school use some sort of way to reassemble the bands. Uh, for another round of competition. So you're like going against a, a, a band that's one. Well, first you're, it's everybody's going against each other. Then I think you go against a, a newly formed band, then a winning band. And each round, you know, you're going back and forth until there's only two bands that haven't broken up yet. Uh, right. Uh, Oh, no, because one of them could have bro Oh, no, yeah. So there's only two bands left, I guess. I didn't even think about that. Because uh, just because uh, Geo's particularly confident that they're going to, like, not braggadociously, but they're one of the most popular bands around at the school. And... Uh, but not outside of the school. It's just a, it, it, and what else? Oh, so there's a big prize, uh, especially this year. I don't know if it was the, before where you go on a European tour. It's pay, you're paid and it's paid for. Not a lot of money, but all expenses paid European tour. Like no plan. It's already booked. Uh, and with time, not at a leisurely pace, uh, 
So that's exciting for the bands too, particularly for Geo. Whenever that came up, Geo would look at Dell, and Dell would look at Geo too. Uh, what else we got? So Battle of the Bands, I, 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 I tried to make uh, notes in my mind, which isn't super effective. Uh, so paid for, univer, univer, who, what, what, uh, where, on campus, big parties, uh, multiple days, uh, uh, oh, who, what, where, when, uh, why. I think, uh, Gio and Dell seemed to really want to win. They talked about it, you know, talked about being seniors. They talked about, uh, lives going in different directions and getting to spend this time together in the European tour that they love this, you know, the be a great way to, you know, either way, it's a great way to like, uh, but they didn't mean it like say goodbye to the school and honor to participate. It's going to be really fun. Oh, neither one of them has really traveled. So it's like an opportunity that neither one of them has had. Or the other band members, I don't know. I wasn't paying attention. I'm zeroed in on these two. So you could hear me apologize. And say, it turns out I'm supposed to help the reporter. Like, uh, even a lot of their music is, like, driven by imaginary travel. Haven't heard any music yet. Uh, who, what, where, when? Okay, and then how? And, uh, you know, they t the reporter actually asked them this. So it's uh, how? Well, it's, like, about ha connecting with the audience, having fun. Uh, and playing, pl playing to the best of our ability, rehearsing, but also being open because there's going to be surprises, uh, being fluid. That was another thing, uh, working as a team, as a band, but sticking to the plan, um, almost perfect. That word was used and follow the plan, uh. So I think that's it for now. Uh, I, I mean, that's all I gathered. Like, uh, like uh, wasn't a lot. Uh, like they did do rehearsal, but I couldn't hear. I could I could hear noise, uh, but I was uh, like, I don't know if that's because of my big ears or is just uh, like uh, that I would have been in the way. So I didn't hear rehearsal, and. Um, yeah, and then I fell asleep, uh, to be honest. I don't even know. I, I maybe, I should, maybe I should wake up since they're in college and pay more attention. But that's it. I mean, I guess I'll rest and I'll be, you know, for you, if you're listening, I, I uh, either you'll not hear the next thing or you'll hear the next thing right away. So cool. Okay. Hey, it's me, Ren again, or B, you know, B3, uh, and, uh, so day one of the, the band competition is over and some things have happened here, uh, that I can totally fill you in on. Let's see. So I was allowed to go to the competition, but it is pretty loud and I'm, uh, everybody knows me, uh, so I am allowed, my, like, uh, so, so I do keep some distance from the stage and we did leave to go like, like, a, so I didn't get, I, my, I'd be better if I was present 24 seven, but that's just not possible. But my understanding is, uh, 64 bands. Uh, so it's again, like there's that back college basketball thing. So I think it's an intertwined alternative. I think they even schedule it. Uh, and maybe basketball's popular at this school. So it's like uh, scheduled at the same time as the games. Those are, those are only theories though. Okay. So the band they're up against was called the arrows. Uh, they sing. Oh, so, so you just had to do, um, an original song only for this first round. And the arrow song was Coke Zero, and they were very. They were not. They were like. Uh, they were not. Um, even though it felt like it was not late at night or anything, they had had uh, been enjoying themselves too much and and overindulged. So their play was very drunk and sloppy. And uh, Geo, they played Break the Wheel. 
Um, what else? Uh, oh, um, so they played a song, Break the Wheel. It was very catchy. I was a little distracted just because I know you're wondering, well, what's the name of the band? And it's just that I guess it's not named after, it's not the Wrens or, you know, it's uh, the, 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 the Binaculas. Uh, so I just feel like it, it, you'd say, you're making that up. Uh, but luckily, I guess that's another why I'm part of the band or whatever, because of my pictures on stuff, uh, or, or Binaculus picture, which is a uh, character in a, a book. I'm Binaculus 3, which leads me, at first I thought I was the third in a series of bunnies, but maybe I'm only the second in a series of bunnies. Uh, and uh, But don't worry, I, 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 as far as I know, I'm, only, I'm a vegetarian. I only eat carrots and lettuce and, and pe- some sort of pellet. Uh, but uh, what else? Uh, yeah, so that was an easy win, I guess, is the thing. Then there was some downtime because, uh, I don't know, there was, uh, the, well, first all the bands played. Then everything went into the algorithm. And then there was a break. Uh, and so this also created like a situation with, like the arrows where people were enjoying the break a lot of the bands that were the reformulated bands. Uh, so then they were supposed to play a uh, uh, cover song, but this isn't always going to be the case, uh, which also puts the um, reformed bands at a disadvantage. But for this one, the band, they called themselves Blue Pleather. It was a reformulated band from whatever the algorithm and the cover song was Walking on Sunshine. And Blue Pleather played a very slow version of it. Uh, and, uh, uh, oh, like, this is more, like, a lot of the music, it's all different kinds of bands. Uh, but the Binoculars is a little bit more uh, punky rock, uh, but mixed genres, uh and Blue Pleather was more of like a, like, what is that called? Uh, rockabilly, but it was too slow. So that was, a, it seemed like an easy one, even for me. And I'm not, a, you know, I'm just a rabbit. Okay, but this was also, um, because even our, uh, even uh, Gio and Dell and the rest of the band, uh, most of the bands are only four or five people. They also kind of, um, partied a little hard and so there was some um definite disagreements going on because geo even geo was like uh kind of setting limits on how much partying could be done but not exactly following them and so there's a lot of uh uh in strong feelings uh and being expressed in in a in a way but uh, so tomorrow, I think it, the schedule, I don't know. I guess it's, uh, they'll just be going back and forth. I don't, this is like, I don't know if it's my bunny brain or just me. But it definitely seems complicated. So I'll be back uh, soon, you know, tomorrow, like tomorrow for me. I'm trying to think of any other details. Oh, so, oh yeah, I guess this is important. It, it, it's, uh, I've got to figure out some way. Yeah, I guess what am I doing? I, sh- I should be doing my job. I'm not, I'm just relaying information. This is also for me to help me tomorrow. So I do need to find a way to, to, to maybe help Geo be a little bit more compassionate and empathetic with the band members and have, like Geo talked about the joy for the audience. Uh, but then Geo's kind of wielding the joy in a way that's a little bit aggressive. Geo also does seem. Uh, like uh, needing Dell's approval, but you're seeking Dell's approval by maintaining this perfectionist type attitude. I mean, I'm just getting to know, like, so I'm like, how can I help with this? And so I don't know if, I, I mean, not to be overly judgmental, but I don't know if this, this style is working, right? So... Um, so I, I don't know. I guess I'm trying to figure out, uh, how to be helpful tomorrow. 
especially as a rabbit, because uh, it's like, I mean, if looking cute and uh, relaxed solved everything, there wouldn't be a pro- you know, there wouldn't be anything for me to do. So I don't know. I'm going to try to think about that uh, and uh, try to figure out a way to get through to Geode and say, hey, you don't, like, uh, there's a lot invested like, like in the results of the, like, I feel like again, and I mean, I think this is why I'm here though. It's like, uh, Geo thinks that, uh, winning this. Also, I read some of Geo's journals. Uh, uh, so you may, uh, that, I don't know if that's what their policy is. They're teaching about that is it will also music notes, but, uh, that Geo thinks that winning this will either will hopefully solidify the relationship with Dell so that they won't, that it'll continue on into the future. So Geo's not expecting like a record deal or anything like that. Uh, but it's like winning and going on the European vacation will solidify their relationship. Uh, or that'll be like, uh, one last, like, uh, that'll make it, if it does have to end, that'll make it okay. And there'll be something for them to save or to gather. And, you know, the first trip or the first, uh, t- you know, they've been on airplanes briefly or geo has Dell has not. Uh, so even the comforting on the airplane and all that, uh, so yeah, that's what's, uh, so I just got to figure out a way to get through to things. So I'll be back with an update, I guess, pretty soon for you, but uh, tomorrow for me. Okay, hey, it's Rin again, and I do have some a lot of updates because today was a busy day, and uh, there's a lot of updates. I did figure out how to get through to Rin, or uh, Geo, kind of, uh, um... So maybe I should explain that first, which I would have never thought is, a, and this is why this is a learning process. I don't know if you listen to any of my other recordings, uh, but I'm new to this. I mean, I've done it a few times, uh, quite a few, a few times. Maybe I don't even remember this part, uh, but maybe one of the things we could do, and the good thing is the limits of the system is make art as the thing some sort of art or, or some sort of try to create something as your pet. But I, you can't create something that's going to make them think you've been. So I could just put my, uh, drag my tail and stuff. Uh, and instead they notice it. Uh, and uh, you can kind of, the only messages you can send are subtle. It's just like a limitation of the system thus far that I've discovered. So it's not like you could write, I could write something out with my tail, even if I tried. So if I'm pushing that intention to the bunny, because we're kind of working together, Benicula and I, Benic B3, sorry. But it's just a, you know, it's just a bunny. I mean, I, you know, it has a limited capacity for this kind of stuff. So even if you're kind of pushing your intention through, the system's limited or the sweet, sweet bunny, Bunnicula B3. So it's not like you can, or not like I've been able to make some sort of clear piece of art. Uh, but I did make something that looked like a thunderbolt uh, uh, because I was thinking about uh, the intensity from yesterday and then the intensity from today because we don't have a drummer and um, that is not like a good and, or... Like, I guess I'm trying to do things in order. It didn't seem like it was good. Uh, and they, like I said, they were out of the band, permanent. Uh, they had just left a voice, like, uh, sent a text and a voicemail. And then Gio was demanding they pick up their phone. Then Dell was like, just stop calling. This is what they said. They left Dell. They sent uh, Gio a text that said, I'm out. Uh, they sent a message to Dell that said, Hey, listen, uh, you know, I, I, like I said, I can't, like, I can't, I got, I'm still have uh, some stuff coming up exams. Uh, 
and I can't like I can't balance both of these intensities. Uh, so I've got to choose, and I chose. They're also not a senior. So they're out of the band, and uh, in this case, uh, with this notice, you you can go on. You don't have to drop out, but you can't replace the the person. Uh, so obviously, there's a lot of strong feelings. So I did the lightning bolt, uh, and I guess uh, everybody took the wrong. They said, "Is that a like a, it almost looks like a." Squig worm, uh, like you know, thing with my tail, I got caught in ink or whatever. Uh, but uh, I mean, Geo's nice, uh, like I said, oh, look at this, too cute, blah, blah, blah. like uh, no, it's a lightning bolt. Uh, so Geo under gets me and said, hey, this is a, we gotta go, we gotta rage on this one. Uh, and uh, they kind of did rally at first because they were up against a recently formed band and they had to play two originals. The band was formed last yesterday, so that band had to stay up all night rehearsing, uh, where we only had to rehearse uh, a little bit. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we played two originals and then one cover, which is a song I don't know the name of. It's like Exit Light, Inner Night, uh, Often Never Neverland or something. I know it's by Metallica. And then we played two songs, one called Ceramic Heart and one called Solita, which is in Spanish. Uh, and even without the drummers, it didn't go great. Uh, um, and uh, probably one of the songs uh, did went very poorly. But... Uh, the other band that they were up against, uh, even without the drums, it didn't, it just, it, it, they, uh, they just weren't like, they're just a recently formed band. Now on the break after this, uh, cause we we're going to go up against a new band, uh, so you don't have as long or, or, uh, a band to that one or has not lost, hasn't broken up yet. Uh, we had a shorter break, but we happened to go early. So then, uh, uh, Gio said, I got to talk to Jacinda, who I guess is some legend at this school, like eight year senior or something like that, uh, who won the competition and is like this, uh, purveyor of wisdom. And so then Jacinda came and just for Gio, like Gio and Jacinda, I guess, uh, Gio, Jacinda and Dell don't get along. Also, I think Jacinda's good at mathematics, uh, so because they, because luckily, I guess. So, the short version is, in the next competition, they lost uh, because they didn't have a drummer. The it was a, it, uh, I, I was a little bit further away because Jacinda closed my cage, uh, so I couldn't even make out the songs. Uh, but the band they're up against is, had been playing the whole time together. They had their full band. And uh, we did not. And so that's the end of Manicula, the Baniculus. But uh, Jacinda uh, and Geo. Uh, so, okay, so then we're going to be, we're waiting to get our next band. But Jacinda said, don't worry. So did, did everybody, the three band members from the, the, the former Berniculus uh, kind of said, okay, bummer. But it just, it's still fun. I guess I'm making it out. Maybe I'm, I mean, because I'm doing work here. Even Geo, like uh, Dell and the, and, the, and the other person, uh, uh like, uh, they, they were like, okay, well, it's, you know, like, and, and, you know, they, they, like, they're still having fun. It wasn't like there was as much meaning and Geo's kind of hiding the, a lot of it and saying, uh, but I could tell Geo's down, but also Geo's very driven. And then Jacinda is very wanting to help. Uh, but I've caught something, which we'll talk about later. And so Jacinda's like, don't worry, like, we'll do, like, let's do the math, uh, 
and said, okay, here's, so like, uh, I'm not, I'm not comfortable with any of this to be honest. Uh, so I'm trying to do a question mark now with my tail and, uh, haven't had success thus far, but I'm going to, tomorrow morning, I'm determined that when, uh, that that when 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 Gio wakes up, uh, there's a question mark or something like it. Uh, and maybe I could do a spiral towards the middle, but that's. But so Jacinda said, "Okay, here's what has to happen. You have to lose. You have to lose. De- like for her, for for. So now the plan. Oh, be oh the because uh. The the best broken up band, reformulated band, also gets to go on the European tour because if, if they win, like, because they could still win, right? So Adele said, or, or Jacinda said, okay, if you, ba- if you, if you and this band lose, uh, and Dell's band wins, uh, and then loses, there's a chance, uh, and uh, uh, Jacinda said, in a chance, you know, I know like uh, a lot of people owe me fl- favors that you could still be put back in a band together right at the very end. You'd have to win once to get into the final and win again. And probably people would be bad about it because you're in the same band. But, you know, that just means the math has to be on our side. Uh but also the other thing is this is a bit of a, a game of attrition. Like a lot of people, very similar to our, our drummer, say, you know what, uh, just take me out of the pool because uh, I got exams or, you know, I just want to have fun now. So it's not like everybody's staying in the pool to be recycled in a lot of uh, – I think it's like a thing of respect that seniors are supposed to stay in. I think this is an unwritten rule. And then the lower classmen are supposed to pull out anyway so that the seniors have a chance, like a second chance, and there's not that many seniors in this competition. So that's what's on schedule for tomorrow is uh, is uh, I don't think that's a good idea to lose on purpose with a band that wants to win and then to somehow try to force to find a way to make sure that like, so there's gotta be levels of trickery in here with Jacinda. So I'll be back, I guess, with more information. Um, I think I'm going to try to draw that, uh, question mark and I'll see what, what I come up with. Okay. It's a Ren again and, uh, lots happened. So I'm trying to give it, I'll try to give it to you in order and walk myself through things. I was not able to do a question mark, uh, with, uh, with my tail, but, uh, my, my, so starting off, uh, I did, tried to early this morning or whatever, when I got up, uh, and my cage door was open. Uh, it's interesting, just in case you're like, uh, I guess no one, if you're a human in some sort of uh, timeline and, and somehow you got access to this, uh, a little confusing to be an open range bunny, but where I sleep and eat is also, uh, just sticks out to me, where I also take care of my, um, because, you know, the, the, like if you ever watch a bunny's nose, I'm always smelling, uh, so, I mean, that's how I know to avoid certain patches of uh, whatever those are, cedar chips. Okay, so I tried to do a question mark. It didn't look like a question mark, uh, but I, then I saw a geo get up, and they like kind of traced to the thing. They looked at my tail and kind of held it gently, gently in their fingers, patted me on the in between the ears, did the old stroke finger between the ears and said, huh, it looks like, uh, looks like you've been, uh, been, uh, I don't know. And they, and they traced, then they traced the thing and it kind of looked like an up and down chart of, uh, you know, something going up and going down and like not mountain peaks, but more like, I don't know, some sort of mass finance type chart. So 
they thought about it. They patted me again. And then they set, it, set forth to execute Jacinda's plan, which I think they had been working on, and they were trying to stay fluid and work on ideas. They lost, so Geo's band, new band, uh, surprise, which was a surprise, lost due to a couple instrument failures and of other band members uh, going in and out, and then Geo getting frustrated. Uh, making kind of Geo look good, but uh, or look bad, but not too bad. Like uh, Geo kind of looked irritated, but then tried to contain their irritation and and Geo like tried to keep going. And uh, then Dell was kind of like, hey, okay, uh, and then Geo, uh, uh, I, I don't want to get into too many details because it makes Geo like I guess I'm Geo's pet, right? Uh, but Geo uh, worked behind the scenes, uh, it worked interpersonally as well as uh, to make sure Adele had won there. Like I said, I can't wait to go see you, and maybe I'll, you know, maybe we'll face you in the finals. So at that point, it was kind of like a kind of tension that raised, I think, uh, the romantic stakes in a. Not in a way, or not, it had no stakes. It kind of created a tension that was positive, uh, and they were flirty and having fun about it. Uh, and Gio was close, uh, right, uh, to where I thought the direction I needed to help Gio get to. But Jacinda was also there, put me back in the cage, and they sabotaged, uh, Dell's band, and then what happened was, uh, I, I, I said, okay, okay, so Jacinda had me in the cage a lot of the time, and then Dell was really disappointed, but uh, Gio was not, and Dell picked up and said, why are you so uh, happy that we lost? Uh, you know, it was a disagreement, right, like another one, and... Uh, now, Dell only picked up on one layer of things, uh, which was that, uh, oh, well, you're excited because you think there's a chance we'll get placed in the same band together. And uh, Gio said, well, no, I mean, and, uh, and I don't know if that one was, but I, I said, okay, I can't, um, can't, I'm still concerned about this whole thing, correct? And I'm not sure what exactly I should do. Uh, to intervene, but I, I felt like uh, this is all a case of like uh, the, the, the old saying: uh, if you hold on to something carbon long enough, it'll become a diamond with enough pressure. And then people saying, actually, this is just something I overheard once uh, at, uh, in the last four days. Uh, they said, you know, you need a hand this big and this long, and, uh, you know, that's just not physically possible. But it really stuck with me that the other person said back, it doesn't mean it's not that, that I won't try it. Uh, it. Again, you know, I was only hearing fragments of the competition because there's a lot of music going on all the time. Also, at this point, I have to suspect uh, the fact that Jacinda... The fact that Jacinda, like uh, the Cinda name, is uh, is taking on some sort of uh, significance here, and that Jacinda, Lucinda, Cinda, there's something going on. The Jacinda's trying to to. Uh, I, I, I can't imagine it's just a coincidence, right? And that uh, it's not happening for some other reason, or that Jacinda's not trying to get in my way. But I don't have any proof of it because uh, I just don't. And so what I decided to do was hold on to a carrot and not eat it like that diamond and then just see w what uh, Gio would do. And then eventually Gio said, are you going to eat that carrot? we got to go. Uh, and I just sat there and held the carrot uh, tightly, as tightly as my cute little forepaws could uh, hold it. Uh, and put my chin on it, and then Gio tried to take it away, and I just squeezed it against me, 
And Geo got frustrated, but said, but B3, what are you doing? And I held it on as tightly as I could. Uh, Geo said, uh, hey, uh, take it easy. Like, uh, don't hold, you know, very comfort. Like, just like you, you can help somebody else, but you can't help you with your own problems or whatever they say. But uh, even said, you know, what do you think you're going to hold on to this carrot forever? It'll be here later, uh, or it'll be another carrot, or maybe something else. Uh, and you can't take this carrot with you to the band thing. You know, if it was, we could leave it in your, and I said, gross, like, please don't leave it in my crates. But I couldn't say that, obviously. And then what progressed from there, um... At first, uh, and I don't want to take credit for it because I'm only part of the turning point, uh, and maybe I had some influence, maybe I didn't, because uh, things didn't work out ideally. But uh, at some point, Dell became aware, like Dell's band lost, uh, as we said. Then uh, Dell was aware that Geo was hoping they would lose. And then Dell discovered that uh, Jacinda was, uh, you know, these, you know, people, people, you know, people, some people talk uh, about everything, whether you're a mathematician, an astrophysicist, uh, you know, or, or you know, an expert on like, uh, like to pronounce, you know, not you're not an expert on quadratic equations. Uh, or you failed making a song called Algorithmic back in 2014. Those people, some people talk. And so it got back to Dell that uh, Jacinda was trying to make sure that Dell and Jill were going to be on the same uh, band. And uh, it, something didn't land right uh, now. At first, you could say, well, it's probably like, uh, there's no, it doesn't matter. It didn't land right with Dell. And eventually what happened was that Dell uh, uh, approached Geo and said, I'm pulling out of the pool. I took my name out of the pool. Uh, and Geo was struck by that. What do you mean? Like, uh, like it's still like a large percent chance. Uh, we're both seniors, you know. That what you like? Uh, there's still a chance to win. Like for one of us, it doubles our chances. Uh, and uh, Dell said, "Yeah, it doubles our chances." I mean, probably the probability. Uh, what if someone, you know, Dell said, "You, you know, kind of cheating at you're you're cheating the rules. Uh, you're cheating the music." Uh, and I'm not cool with that. I don't want to be a part of it. Uh, like I did this for fun uh, and, and, you know, excitement and, and the process. And, and, yeah, it would have been cool to travel Europe together or individually. But, uh, you know, I feel like this, uh, like uh, like our band broke up. And basically I think it was like not only are, is our band breaking up as a result of this, but we are. And maybe you should accept some responsibility for a Geo. And to Geo's credit, holy resilience, uh, Geo said, you're right. Uh, in this whole time, I've been trying to control all these outcomes. Uh, and, uh, at any, you know, the reason we originally lost our drummer was because uh, I was too strict and pressure on everything was too systematic and had to be my way too much pressure and uh you know i saw pressure made a diamond uh and Dell said it does uh, actually because Dell's a uh, like a chem what is that called not a chemistry major they don't say that anymore microchemist or something i don't know or geothermal uh chemist so uh and then, and then they kind of joked about that so to relieve some tension. But Gio said, uh, you know, I was wrong. My behavior, you know, my behavior was driven by, like, uh, I had a diamond in my hand the whole time or pretty nice rock. Uh, a piece of carbon's pretty nice. You know, then they went back and forth again and cracked up. And uh, 
in. And basically, that was the lesson. Geo said, well, I've lost uh, the carbon for the diamond. You know, I lost the diamond for the carbon. Uh, and so I guess it's, I mean, this is, they were at a younger stage in their life. And uh, they're also caught up in this. Uh, now, the surprise to Dell was that Geo said, well, I'm going to stay in the pool. Uh, and I guess I'm, you know, I'm not all about, uh, you know, I'm about gray areas. So some of you trainers may, you know, so, and that's what we're supposed to be trained to do. So some of you might say, well, maybe I should have got uh, Geo to confess that, you know, the, like, uh, but, but Geo's intention was like, uh, you know, Geo made poor choices. But lo and behold, Geo's band won. And uh, today, this evening, and Geo's going to Europe. Uh, Dell is not. They're no longer together, but they seem friendly. And it'll be the next stage in Geo's life, I guess. I don't, I don't, I guess, like, I'll probably feel like this is like a kind of subtle resolution that they've been wanting us to be involved in, that I was barely involved in. And you see, how does this, and you see, well, it's not a major turning point in someone's life. Because if you get involved with those, you know what I mean? I mean, this is all fuzzy. Uh, but, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think you could take a bunny to Europe anyway. So as soon as they get me out of here, I'll be on my next mission. But I think things will work out for Geo and for Dell. Maybe for the reporter. If I was supposed to help the reporter, holy cow. But I'm aware of this Jacinda. And I'm I'm paying close attention to that as well. And now I'm going to get some rest. Uh, I sleep all the way, the furthest part of my cage, you know, I've designed a way. Uh, I'm just kidding. You're, you're, you're a nerd to it or whatever uh, as a rabbit. Uh, I mean, you do go. Anyway, you don't want to think about it anyway. So I wish I had a salt lick. Uh, and um, hopefully I'll dream of salt licks later. And then I'll be on my next report. Uh, whatever order you're listening to these in, um, don't lose the, the, uh, I don't know. I, I guess I want like, uh, don't lose the, the carbon for the diamond. As they say, if you have a piece of coal in your hand, it might be the present you needed instead of the present you wanted. If Santa Claus is giving coal, but don't try to turn, don't try to turn your coal into a diamond because it's not physically possible. It would be an incredible waste of your energy. That's what I learned. Yeah, good night, everybody. I want to thank everybody who became a patron recently. Dina, Rebecca, and Mitzi, thank you. Thanks, thanks, thanks. And good night, Laura, Callie, and Marvin. Thank you, thanks, thanks, thanks. And good night, Madam, Linda, and Jason. Thank you, thanks, thanks, thanks. And good night, Angela, Blurp, and Erpel. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Good night. Nora, Joe, and Brooke. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Good night. Cassie, Bonnie, and Cheryl. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Good night. Russell, Jordan, and Cynthia. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Good night. Ashton, Alex, and Dio. Uh, thank you. Thanks. 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 Good night. Colbert. Caitlin and Elise, thank you, thanks, thanks, good night. Uh, Tina, Benji, and Diosita, thank you, thanks, thanks, good night. Fathalo and Crystal, thank you, thanks, thanks, good night. Thanks, everybody who supports the show directly on Patreon or Apple Podcasts or, you know, supports the show some other way financially or supports the sponsors. That's how we come out free choice a week and continue to make the podcast. But there's also a huge free way to help the show, which is just let people know about podcasting in general and uh, help grow podcasting overall. And that helps the show, believe it or not. Uh, just because it gives eventually, like, uh, people that uh, the podcast might help, uh, you know, they say, okay. So, uh, yeah, let people know about podcasting, soft sell it, show them. Uh, I don't know. You mean what I mean? Talk about it in a specifically general way or a generally specific way. Or generally talk about it generally, but, uh, you know, don't push it on anybody because then that never worked for me. So maybe I'm making it. Anyway, uh, thanks for all the support. 
And here's either uh, like a, uh, here's a Tuck UN sponsor or me, more scoots. Uh, and that's how we've grown the archives. I don't even know. I can't remember the last time I looked. 300 plus uh, episodes for free. Anybody who needs them, thanks. All right, everybody, it's time to talk about tonight's sponsor, Helix Sleep. Take their two-minute sleep quiz at helixsleep.com slash sleep. Because you've heard me talking about my Helix for years. Anytime I leave home, I feel forlorn for my Helix Dusk Lux because I love it, because it fits my needs. And I have tons of family members and friends who have gotten their own Helixes, uh, You deserve a Helix. Helix is a premium mattress brand that provides tailored mattresses based on your unique sleep preferences. The Helix lineup includes 14 unique mattresses, including a luxury collection, a mattress for big and tall sleepers, even a mattress just for kids. And how do you know which Helix mattress works best for you and your body? Take that Helix sleep quiz I talked about. You'll find your perfect mattress in under two minutes. And that mattress is shipped straight to your door free of charge. You get to try it out by sleeping on it in your own home. That's why Helix offers a 100-night risk-free trial. You can see how your body adjusts, and if it's not the best fit, you're welcome to return it for a full refund. And the best part about Helix is they know everybody's unique and you sleep differently. That's why Helix has several different mattress models to choose from, each for a different sleep position and feel preference. There's mattresses with memory foam for optimal pressure relief if you sleep on your side. More responsive foam to cradle your body and give you essential support for stomach and back sleeping positions. Enhanced cooling features to keep you from overheating. And if your spine needs some extra TLC, they got you. Every Helix mattress has a hybrid design. Individually wrapped steel coils with premium foam layers on top. Perfect combination of comfort and support. When I took the Helix quiz, I got matched with the Helix Dusk Lux because I sleep on my side, I sleep on my stomach, and I sleep hot. I want something that keeps me cool and comfortable, and the Helix Dusk Lux does that for me. Not only is it the best mattress I've ever slept on, but the setup was fast and easy. Straight to my door. All I had to do was open the box and set it up on my bed. Plus, Helix mattress is American-made, come with a 10- or 15-year warranty, depending on your model. You get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. Like I said, if you don't love it, I mean, I know you will. But if you don't, they pick it up for you. They'll give you a full refund. And if you don't want to take my word for it, Helix has been awarded the number one mattress picked by GQ and Wired Magazine, even recommended by multiple leading chiropractors and doctors. Sleep medicine is a go-to solution for improving your sleep. And Helix is offering up to 20% off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to helixsleep.com slash sleep. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long. With Helix, better sleep starts now.